Well, you may have noticed I already dropped my set review for EX7, because surprise, surprise, we're getting another set in under a month. However, one major difference is that in addition to the side set, we're also getting some brand new starter decks. Today's video goes over briefly the new Guardian Vortex starter deck, but one key difference here is that I'm also going to go over the upgrades for the starter deck as well. And as always, if you enjoy this type of content, do consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that notification bell for more future content. Starter decks 18 and 19 will also have reprints of training cards, meaning if you want a new arts for them, you got it. For the value of roughly what was $30 immediately with a starter, this is well worth it. Fluffymon makes its second debut into the Digimon card game, and is a simple green level 2 Digimon that when attacking, once per turn, you may suspend one other Digimon with as much or less DP as this Digimon. Because of its when attacking effect, this could be a really nice egg in decks like Grandis, which offer redirects mid-attack. But for the true use, Zephyrgamon. Briefly, this is going to be the pronunciation of the card that I use for the channel, mainly because the hard pronunciation of it makes me a smidge uncomfortable that could be construed as an offensive word. I dread the day that we also get this Digimon in the Digimon card game. Beomon also returns, this time a green-red Digimon that has 3000 DP and Fortitude. One thing that mildly irks me about this card is the fact that it does not Digivolve from a Yokomon for zero. Falcomon also makes another appearance as a green card, and though small in size has a win attacking effect that suspends one of your opponent's Digimon. Although low DP, most of these effects lead back to the protagonist of Liberator, Shoto Kazuma. One thing that I love about this starter deck is that it introduces searchers into the starter deck. It's not that common that you see those on-play 3 cost Digimon that reveal the top 3 or 4 cards of the deck to add one card of a trait and one card of another. Terramon introduces this fact and looks for a bird or avian Digimon, and then one card with the Vortex Warrior or the Liberator trait. Shoto Kazuma is a Liberator trait card. And finally, the last level 3 for this deck goes to Muchomon. Muchomon is arguably another one of Shoto's partners as this Digimon was frequently seen in the beginning of Liberators before Terramon debuted. All turns, once per turn, when an effect suspends this Digimon, one of your Digimon with the Bird or Avian in one of its traits or with Vortex Warrior gets plus 3000 DP until the end of your opponent's turn. The Inheritable is Piercing. This is also fairly new because Piercing has never really been with the level 3 green Digimon. The fact that it is now offers a bit more aggro potential for DP or other trashing effects in the higher level inheritables. Moving up the chain, Kiwimon has a small DP stat line that gives it an on-play and on-deletion effect that suspends one of your opponent's Digimon, and interestingly has a special ruling that gives the Digimon the vegetation trait. So if you are looking for another level 4 target in green decks, you can definitely run this as well. Sadly, plant decks have largely gone unnoticed for a while now because of the very potent combination of Edamon Valkyrie Ace because this combo alone can clear most green boards to nothing. Kakatorimon also returns, but as a blocker for the deck and provides inheritable piercing. In the early days, blocker Digimon typically missed out on having an inheritable, instead providing simply defense for the color and had little splash ability. That is, until more recent sets. Though I still find Digimon or card effects that gift blocker to be most effective. And finally, Gaomon rounds out the level 4s as Terramon's Digivolution. This Digimon also has Vortex, meaning if you were to on-play Terramon then Digivolve into this, you could immediately attack an opponent's Digimon, pending you have enough DP. If it's hidden security, you may play one Liberator trait card with a play cost of 4 or less from your hand or trash, without paying cost. Terramon? Shoto Kazuma? Value Town. Deramon is the first level 5 Digimon to review over, and is a simple Digimon that has Blocker. In addition to being an avian trait Digimon, it also has the vegetation trait, meaning again you can search for this in even decks that utilize Palmon, Lalomon, and BT14 Mimi Tachikawa. In addition, it has an on-deletion effect that allows you to play one Digimon card with the bird, avian, vegetation, or plant trait with 3000 DP or less from your hand without paying cost. Every time I read one of these cards, my mind races on what sort of silly shenanigans you could do because outside of the level 3s and some of the level 4s here, you could play Togemon for free. The only downside, of course, is utilizing your resources efficiently. Grand Gaomon has an on-play and when digivolving effect that suspends one Digimon, yours or your opponent's. If it was your Digimon, you may play one Digimon card with the bird or avian in its traits with 3000 DP or less without paying the cost. Again, more Vortex shenanigans. 
The Inheritable simply allows you to unsuspend when you attack an opponent's Digimon once per turn. Parrotmon having its second printing has an on-play effect that suspends one of your opponent's Digimon. Then one of their Digimon can't unsuspend until the end of their turn. But the Inheritable provides simple piercing. I doubt this will see play, and because you're getting EX7 at the same time, you can immediately throw these out for Grand Galmon. But now it's time to return to the boss monster, Zephyrgamon. Zephyrgamon has Vortex, and a when digivolving effect that suspends one Digimon, and then unsuspends one Digimon. Could be yours, or your opponent's for both effects. Hilariously, if we ever get green-red Digimon with Raid, it'd be hilarious to create a Raid target. All turns, once per turn when a Digimon becomes unsuspended, this Digimon isn't affected by your opponent's Digimon effects and gets plus 3000 DP for the turn. At most, this Digimon will only ever be 14,000 DP on your opponent's turn, which is kind of a shame considering other decks like Magnemon X can retain all of their DP through the opponent's turn. But since it does have a Digivolution cost of 3, I can respect it. Eaglemon is the other level 6 Digimon, and this one is an interesting one. This Digimon digivolves for 4 from a green level 5, has Fortitude, and an on-play when digivolving effect that returns one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the hand. Though it won't be played, there's some hilarious jank you could do with this. With two cards to go, it's Shoto Kazuma, yet another memory fixer that's now available in Starter Decks. This Tamer has a Your Turn effect that when one of your Digimon attacks an opponent's Digimon, by suspending this Tamer, switch the attack target to another one of your opponent's Digimon, or the player. You know, because Black has quite a few ways to play Tamers, I always wonder if there's a way to make some of the Black elements from the Greymon starter deck work. Maybe you could use a certain Digimon to get there. I'm intrigued, but I probably won't try it. But the last card for review is Animoy Embrace, a 5 cost green option that suspends one Digimon. If this effect suspended one of your Digimon, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of the deck. Then unsuspend one Digimon. Which means, with Digimon that have Vortex, they can attack since they are now unsuspended, and can attack again. The security effect simply returns one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of the deck. In regards to the security effect, it could be hit or miss considering there are some Digimon that can unsuspend before the check occurs. Or, not at all. And while I could normally end the video here, because of our specific release this time, I'm going to provide an upgrade segment to the deck as well. The first problem I have with this deck, when upgrading it, is you're going to need the promos. Not necessarily the Shoto, but for sure you'll want the promo Terramon and Gaomon. Unfortunately, because they're promos, this already locks them behind a paywall. Fluffymon from EX7 will provide you the most memory efficiency when it comes to your plays, as when you delete a Digimon, you'll get that memory back. With your level 3s, you're running all Terramons, first the promo that lets you suspend one of your opponent's Digimon on play, and a Your Turn plus 2000 DP Inheritable. The Starter Deck Terramon for searching, and the EX7 for reducing Digivolution costs. Now, if you can't get the promo, you could use Starter Deck Terriermons for playing Shotos at a reduced cost. The only downside is, your searching gets a little worse. Gaelmons are the same. Again, you'll need four promos because this Digimon gives itself a buff if you suspend one Digimon. Combined with Shoto and your Inheritables, it could be a 9000 DP Piercer. The EX7 Gaelmon plays Shoto for free, whether you have one or none. And the starter deck variant at two copies has a security effect. Though again, if you can't get your hands on promos, BT13 Togemon could be useful with again playing your Shotos. The only downside here is, she's a real tiny body on board comparatively. Luckily, when it comes to level 5s, you only have two Grand Gaelmon options that really work, EX7 and the Starter Deck variant. In researching some lists quickly on Digimonmeta.com, the Starter Deck was preferred. Me personally, I like EX7 more because it innately has immunity by Digimon effects. Retaliation, D-Digivolve, and Bounce are huge. As for Zephyrgamon, I prioritized the Starter Deck variant over the EX7 one. With extra DP and immunity, this could be better for an aggro variant. However, if you're going for more control elements, EX7 does the job. While crafting this deck, it became clear that there was going to be 1-2 to two flex spots. Some decks ran no level 7s, while others did. Imperial Dramon Paladin mode is just going to be huge no matter where you put it, because it can literally trash all the Digivolution sources. And of course my other flex spot goes to the option card, Hidden Potential Discovered. Though if you didn't want either of these cards, 
Green Memory Boost also works. For your Consistency card, Agility Training works here perfectly no problem, because it finds everything. Other decks ran the White Liberator promo, but if everything's green, Agility Training hits it all. And of course for defense, Giant Missile. Tamers could go pretty much any way you want it. With the Memory Fixer, it guarantees you a start of turn with 3 memory, which can be especially huge with Agility Trainings or the effects of your Digimon that reduce Digivolution cost. But the mandatory 4 of goes to EX7 Shoto for the Blocker and the Piercing ability at end of turn. While I did shotgun this deck very quickly in just a few minutes comparatively to my normal deck profile video, this list is untested, and because of the lack of scramble cards, this deck will have to make do without them for the time being. If you're lacking in promos, I have made the mentions of what you can substitute for the time being. But overall, Zephyrgamon is a pretty fun deck that saw a few tops in Japan. What are your thoughts on this deck, and will you be building it? Let me know, because next up, it's Fabled Waltz with Sendromon. This is Digipanda, logging out.